Radical. Welcome to Flea Market Stories, documenting one man's journey into the world of flea marketing. I haven't done one of these in a while. And to be honest, for most of the month of October, there's not been a whole lot to talk about, at least in sales. I mean, sure, I have stories here or there, but let's just say if sales are terrible, I'm not really motivated to even do a flea market stories. And I will say that it's a hell of a shame, October. October was terrible, terrible. And it was some of the most gorgeous weather. A good, good fair weather. Good fair weather. Good fest weather. So that's what it was. In all of October, all fairs and all fest. And that took people away from the flea market. That's the biggest competitor, I think, to the flea market. I mean, not, I mean, rain, that gets in the way of flea market sales and everything, sure. But competitors to flea market, fairs and fest. Weekend after weekend, I just looked around and I was like, is this the 11 o'clock rush? Is this a 12 o'clock rush? Then I'd be waiting. Okay, maybe there's a one o'clock rush. And sometimes if you're lucky, they were, there was a little bit of a rush. But I just got crushed in sales. Crushed. Like, I can handle the loss. I can handle it. I mean, the loss of sales, like I still got the stuff. I didn't drop my prices and I didn't lose money on anything. I just would sit there weekend after weekend. Just cursing, cursing the fairs and the fest. Like, you fucking fest, fucking fair, you know, taking my money away. But not all of October was bad. It ended on a high note. I sold two 360 systems last weekend, some other stuff, so not too bad. Uh, on the one day, the Sunday, I, I sold those systems within an hour of each other. So I know the families are connected, and you guessed it. Hispanic families. So not not too bad. But man, I, I just I just hated October. November, hopefully, it'll be be a little better. Because you know, we're getting into the holidays and people will be looking to buy more game stuff. I I want to talk about how I'm making the decision to drop prices. It's a tough decision. It is. It's a tough decision to sometimes sell things that you have in your game collection because you don't want to part with them. That's one tough thing to do. But if you're a business, admitting to yourself that you got to drop prices, it's a tough pill to swallow. It really is. I mean, you have all these ideas that, you know, you're going to sell this game for this much, this game for that much. And sometimes... You get really happy because you have some luck and you you lean back, you, you fold your arms like, hmm, I sold Call of Duty Ghost on 360 for 20 bucks. Hmm, not too bad, not too shabby. But then time goes on and then you notice that you're mostly selling the $5 and $10 games. And it's not even my fault, not even my fault. Not selling games that are in great condition, not displaying them, not being a good salesperson, not being there for somebody to answer questions about the games. That's none of that is my fault. I've held up my end of the bargain. But what it is, is simple. The same situation as last year, if I was in, if I had the same setup, the same spread as one year ago, then I would, business would be booming. Business will be booming. It comes down to how fucking shitty the economy is right now for most people, especially the people that go usually go to a flea market. You got to understand your clientele. And the flea market is a certain clientele. Now, occasionally, you get somebody that's a big time collector or somebody that basically just has money to spend, has money to blow. But most times, 9% of the people that come to the flea market, they're looking for, number one, a good deal, and number two, some awesome stuff. A great deal on some awesome stuff. 
And I was noticing that if I had some $5 games out in a, a tray, I would sell the $5 games before the $20 games in most cases. It's as simple as people don't have as much money this year as last year. Inflation is higher this year than it was last year. Look at the prices on some things. A roll of biscuits last year, early last year, like a buck. Now that same roll is two to two fifty. People don't really like pay attention to it. And if you look at the actual figures of inflation, it's not right. They say, oh, it's three to four percent. No, no. It's fifty percent in some cases, more than fifty percent on some goods. Have you looked at the cost of a 12 pack of Coca Cola? It's insane. It's nuts. A bag of chips, bag of fucking Doritos. Well, the big bags I saw for like, what, seven, eight bucks? People pay, paying eight bucks for a fucking bag of Doritos. You think they have a lot of money left over? No, they don't. If it comes to maybe eating a bag of Doritos or buying a Call of Duty game, they're like, well, I'm hungry. I got to buy some Doritos. Interest rates are up. Pay has not significantly went up across the board so people are not making more but they're paying more 